In this video, we will study the so-called merge sort algorithm. It is based on the divide and conquer technique, which main idea is the following. To solve a given computational problem, you first split it into two or more disjoint subproblems. Then you solve each of these subproblems recursively. And finally, you combine the result, the results that you get from the recursive calls to get a result for your initial subproblem. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the merge sort algorithm. So let's show a toy example. We are given an array of size 8 and we are going to sort it. First, we just split this array into two halves of size 4, just the left half and the right half. Then we make two recursive calls to, solve, to, to sort both these parts. These are two results in arrays. Now what remains to be done is to, to merge these two arrays into one, these two arrays of, of size 4 into one array of size 8. Well, let's, let's think how this can be done. First of all, I claim that it is easy to find the minimal value in the result in array. Indeed, we know that the minimum value in this case in the first array is 2 and the minimum value in the second array is 1, which means that the minimum value in the result in merged array must be 1, right? So let's take 1 from the right subarray, put it in the result in array and forget about it. It is already in its right place. Right? What, what remains is an array of size 4 and an array of, of size 3 that still need to be merged. Well, again, it is easy to find the minimum value of, uh, of the result of merging these two arrays. In this case, it is 2 because the minimum value of the, in the array of size 4 is 2 and the minimum value in the array of size 3 is 6. So 2 is smaller than 6, so we, we get 2 out of, of our left array, put it in... Uh, into the resulting array after one and, and proceed, right? In the end, we get the following sorted array. Again, the pseudocode of the merge sort algorithm directly implements this idea. So this pseudocode takes uh, an input array A of size n as an input, and if n is equal to one, then it, in this case, just nothing needs to be done. We can just return the, the array A itself. If n is greater than 1, on the other hand, then we split the array A into two roughly equal uh, parts and sort them recursively. We call them B and C here. Then the only thing that needs to be done is to, to merge these two sorted arrays. So this is done in the procedure merge, which we will present on the next slide. And finally, we just return the result of this merging procedure. The pseudocode of the merging procedure is also straightforward. Assume that we are given two sorted arrays B and C of size P and Q respectively, and we would like to merge them into a sorted array of size P plus Q. So the first thing we do is create an array of size P plus Q, an array D. It is initially empty. Then we keep doing the following thing. So what is the minimum value among all the values uh, stored in the arrays B and C? Well, it is easy to find. We know that the first element in the array B is its smallest element, and the first element in the array C is its smallest element. So the smallest one among these two is the smallest element inside the union of these two arrays, right? So we just find the minimum of these first elements and move it from one of these arrays to the to the result in array D and forget about this element completely. Now what is left is essentially the same problem. We are left with two sorted arrays and we still need to merge them. So we do exactly the same. We take the first two elements, we compare them and move the, small, the smaller one to the result in array. And we, we keep doing this while both of these arrays are empty. I mean, we need this to be able to take the first elements. When one of them becomes empty, we just copy the rest of, of the other array to the result in array D. I mean, we append this rest to the result in array D. Well, it is not difficult to see that this procedure is correct and its running time is P plus Q, namely the size of the array B plus the size of the array Q. And this is just because we just scan both of these arrays from left to right in the run of this merging procedure. This is how sorting our initial array of size 8 by the merge sort algorithm looks like. So the merge sort algorithm first splits 
the initial array of size 8 into two arrays of size 4. Each of these arrays of size 4 in turn is split into two arrays of size 2 and each of them is split into two arrays of size 1. Then merge procedure starts merging these arrays of size 1 into arrays of size 2, then into then this arrays of size 2 into arrays of size 4, and finally it merges the result into arrays of size 4 into the resulting array of size 8. We are now going to prove that the running time of the merge sort algorithm on a sequence containing n elements is big O of n log n. Note that this is significantly faster than a quadratic selection sort algorithm. For example, it is perfectly okay to sort a sequence of size 1 million, for example 10 to the 6, on your laptop using merge sort algorithm. While for the quadratic time selection sort algorithm, uh, sorting uh, a sequence of size 10 to the 6, 1 million, will take roughly 10 to the 12 operations, which is too much for modern computers. Okay, so to prove this lemma, to prove the upper bound on the running time of the merge sort algorithm, first note that to sort, to merge two parts of size n over 2 of our initial array takes the linear, linear time, namely big O of n. Right, because, well, the left part has size n over 2, the right part has size on n over 2, and for merging, we basically just scan both these parts from left to right. So it takes just a linear amount of work to do this. Which in turn means that if we denote by t of n the running time of our merge short algorithm, then it satisfies the following recurrence. t of n is at most 2 t of n over 2 plus big O of n. Here, 2 t of n over 2 corresponds to two recursive calls, right? So we denoted by t of n the running time of our algorithm on, on input of size n. So when we sort two sequences of size n over 2, we spend time uh, twice t of n over 2. So the big O of n term corresponds to the to what we do before we make recursive calls and what we do after recursive calls. So what we do before is just split the input array into two halves. What we do after is merging the results of two arrays into into one array of size n. So all of this can it is not difficult to see that all of this can be done in, in linear time. Right? So we get this recurrence and on the next slide we're going to show that this recurrence implies that the running time of our algorithm is bounded from above by n log n. To estimate the running time of this algorithm, let's consider its recursion tree. Namely, at the top of this tree we have one array of size n. So for this array of size n we, we make two recursive call calls for arrays of size n over 2. Each of these arrays of size n over 2, in turn, is split into two arrays of size n over 4. So we get four arrays of size n over 4, and so on. So in this tree, we have log n levels, right? Now, let's estimate the work done at each of the, of each of the levels of this tree separately. Namely, once again, to solve a problem of size n, to sort an array of size n. We first prepare to make recursive calls. In this case, we, we just split an input array into two halves of size n over 2. Then we do make recursive calls, and then we need to combine their results. So all the work done inside recursive calls will be accounted for uh, on the lower levels of this, uh, of this tree. So now what we're going to do is to account for only the work done before uh, the recursive calls and after the recursive calls at each separate level. And we know already that it takes linear time to do this. I mean, when if we have an array of size n, it takes linear time to split it into two halves, and then it takes linear time to combine the results of recursive calls into one array. Okay, so let's just denote this time by cn. I mean, let's denote the hidden constant inside big O by c. Then what we can say is that on the top level we spend time cn. Then on the next level, for each subarray, we spend time c 
times n over 2 because the size of array is, is n over 2. However, we have two arrays. So the total work that we do at this level is 2 multiplied by c multiplied by n over 2, which is again just cn. On the next level, we spend time 4 because we have 4 arrays multiplied by c multiplied by n over 4 because the size of the array is now n over 4. This is cn again, and so on. So we have log n levels. At each level, we we do roughly cn operations. So the total number of operations in our algorithm is cn log n, which proves our lemma. So again, what we've just proved is that the running time of the merge short algorithm is big O of n log n. So in the next video, we will show that actually no algorithm, no comparison-based algorithms, to be completely formal, can sort a given sequence of n elements asymptotically faster than in n log n time, which actually means that the merge short algorithm is asymptotically optimal.